Welcome to a Brooklyn Baptist Health exclusive. My name is Brian Pavlik. Thank you so much for joining us as we continue to look at a century of caring, 100 years of service of Princeton Baptist Medical Center. And I am joined today by a wonderful representation of Princeton Baptist, and that is Ms. Carol Donaldson. Carol, how are you today? I am great. Thank you. You're absolutely welcome. Thank you. I mean, you talk about somebody who has some years of service and just is a popular figure here at Princeton Baptist. Uh, it's this lady right here. Of course, we're always going to tell stories and reflections of 100 years of caring in our own personal words through our own uh, voices and people. And uh, when I got the list of people to meet, it was, you got you to gotta talk to Carol. So Carol, I'm talking to you today. I know a little bit about you, but I want everybody who's going to be watching this to know about you. So just introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about yourself, your title, and how long you've been with Princeton. And then we'll get into some of these more difficult questions. Uh, I'm Carol Donaldson, and I am an RN. Um, I have actually been an RN at Princeton for 46 years, but before that, um, I had an opportunity to get to know Princeton um, growing up because I was born here. There you go. So now. <laughs> okay, and we, we won't need to disclose that date, but that does right. lead into the first question that I had, which was, what initially attracted you to start your career at Princeton? Now, of course, being born at Princeton, that's hard to say, well, this is eventually where I'm going to work here. So if you don't mind, skip forward a few years and let us know that oh, yeah. moment where you started looking at Princeton as a place where you were going to make this, I don't know if it was at the time, a temporary job, a short-time job. Goodness, I don't think you expected to be here 40-something years later, but just tell us about those first couple of, you know, interactions with Princeton as an adult saying, this may be a good place to work. Well, actually, when I was in high school, we had a, a, a youth program called um, Candy Stripers. There you go. And so I was able to participate in that in the summers, get to see some different areas of the hospital, work with different kinds of departments. And then in nursing school at Sanford, I was able to have clinicals here and at other hospitals. But... Um, really enjoyed the um, family environment that I found here. Our physicians are just highly trained and excellent in the care that they give and uh, include all levels of caregivers in their teaching and how they're caring for our patients. And so um, it was just an, a way for me to come back to Princeton or come to Princeton as a nurse. Um, candy striper. I'm, I'm, did you have the outfit? The red. Oh, I had the, white the pink and the pink and white outfit. Yes, Absolutely. I don't have it now. Oh no, no, no! <laughs> my goodness, no. But I, I, and that's the thing. You know, as we start celebrating the 100 years and some of the old photos and things come out, I'm sure you're going to see some of those classic outfits that you kind of remember and all that. And uh, yeah, like like Carol says, she probably doesn't have the outfit, but she could probably tell you exactly uh, how it was <laughs> back then. But, you know, I, it's funny when we talk about back then, and my goodness, all, all, the longevity that you've had in one place is just truly amazing. And, you know, many things change, including candy striper outfits, including the term candy striper. I don't, we don't call that that anymore. But so many things change um, over the years, especially 100 years. But I know you've seen a couple of, whether it's constant visions or a value at Princeton that's remained. If you don't mind, share with us just one of those things that has stayed in your eyes or from your perspective. What's one thing that just has continually been a constant vision or value that Princeton has emphasized for the majority of your time there? I think, uh, you know, I've always felt that Princeton provides state-of-the-art care yeah. in a faith-based setting. Awesome. And that means a lot to me. Yeah. Um, so we keep up with the types of things that are going on around us as far as new, um, new care ways and new technology, and, um, but we also do it in a faith-based setting. Mm-hmm. 
some what is it the, there was a good book once once written that said that the word will remain the same throughout so I, I i trust that book a little bit and i think dr walker would appreciate me saying that as well but absolutely and that's the thing you know princeton still has the same cores and foundations of those biblical teachings the healing ministry of jesus christ that carol has mentioned and that has been important and that has not changed in these 100 years um, as we continue to serve birmingham and the greater birmingham area for 100 years and now carol transition a little bit with me you said you were born at the hospital are you originally from the birmingham metro area i am so i grew up in the western part of birmingham yeah um, i graduated from Inslee high school yep which is no more, but is close to this area. Uh, my father was a physician and had his uh, family practice in Wylam, which is in the western part of town. Absolutely. So, um, yes. Princeton. Well, you know firsthand then the impact that Princeton has on those communities on the western side of town. And growing up, like you said, as you had your programs through whether it was Sanford or, you know, a teen program or anything like that, did, were there other ways that you saw Princeton impact your community? You said, obviously, you know, your father was here. Um, I believe your sister, your kids, it just Princeton has been home to you. But were there any specific other ways that you got involved or was it just a place again, like you said, for a teen internship program or pro, uh, things like that that kind of got you involved. Talk a little bit more about Princeton's impact on the communities, not just then, but now as well as you've seen. Well, we've, uh, Princeton's always been involved as a teaching hospital. Yes. So like I said, as, you know, a student, I was able to provide uh, or learn from the opportunities here, but we still have all kinds of students who come to our area. But one thing that I became involved with for many years um, was our, our youth program called Achievers, mm. where we uh, uh, had high school students come to Princeton twice a month, and we introduced them to different departments of our hospital. They were able to see the types of procedures or care that those uh, departments gave, and hopefully just to think about a healthcare profession. But we also let them see other areas of the hospital that don't provide care, but are very important to our hospital, our engineering department yes. or our dietary department, those areas that are support areas for us. Um, so, you know, we're a community in ourself and we reach out to the community. Yeah. Also, over the years, you know, I've been involved with a reading program at Hemp Hill Elementary School, or as we did community fairs, we'd go out and have our, um, you know, our health screenings in different locations. So, yeah. you know, Princeton's always reached out to our community. There you go. A community built on care in the truest of sense right there echoed by Carol. Carol, you've been wonderful. And I know we only have a short time here today. And of course, if you're out and about at Princeton or as we celebrate this 100th and you see Carol, just get to tell her some more amazing stories. I'm sure she can line up and down the hallways with things about this was here or this person was here or I know that person personally. Um, and that's why I love these interviews and just the hearing from the voices of Princeton that have made this such a wonderful place for the past 100 years. And then Carol, as you know, you know, there, there's going to be another Carol. Well, not exactly, but there's going to be people who fill the, the shoes and all that. And that's going to happen over this next 100 years. So as you leave your legacy and are continuing to build and until your retirement or whatever, you know, whatever they push you out, really, right? As you look at the next crop of people who are going to serve Princeton for the next 100 years, is there any piece of advice that you would give those employees if this was in a time capsule and they said, oh, let's, let's unearth this video, 200 years, you know, celebration. What is the one piece of advice Carol Donaldson gives the next 100 years of Princeton employees? I would say to always stay true to your calling and to pray daily mm -hmm. for God's guidance and whoever he allows you to care for that day, because we are here to serve, and uh, we need to remember that. We're here to serve. 
and she's done it for many years, folks. She's one of the best. That's why she was told, hey, Brian, you've got to get in touch with this lady. You gotta, you're got you wonderful, Miss Carol. I promise you, you we've, people speak so highly of you. I'm just glad that I had the opportunity to hear a little bit about your story today. I appreciate everything you have done in your many years of service. I hope you really enjoy this celebration and a fun look back this entire year. And of course, as we have decorations and we have mementos and things that are lining our hallways these days, um, not just for Miss Carol, but if you are a part of this community and, and Princeton has been a part of your life, whether it was birth, whether it was tending to a family member in any stage or transition of life, we want you to celebrate with us this year. Come back and see friends like Carol. Come back and see the new doctors, the old doctors, anyone who's been there, our chaplains, yeah, anybody who has impacted your life. Miss um, Carol being a fine representation of that, we'd love to see you again and we'd love to serve you. Miss Carol, I do appreciate you. I do thank you for your time. And for everybody who is watching, thank you very much for allowing us to provide you with a century of caring for these hundred years. And we hope to see you at Princeton real soon. <laughs>